As the chairman mentioned yesterday at NRC headquarters just across the street here, we held a very, very sober one-year commemoration of the events at Fukushima Daiichi, and the ambassador of Japan to the United States, Ambassador Fujisaka, we were very honored to have present at our commemorative events, and he gave very brief remarks. During these remarks, he told us all that he had recently been back in the areas of Japan that were devastated by the earthquake and, and subsequent tsunami, and he told us that he had asked the Japanese citizens uh, if there were any messages that he could bring back to the United States and convey to the American people on their behalf, and he said they had two messages. The first was they asked their ambassador to carry back to the United States their deep gratitude for uh, all of the assistance and support that were provided. He used the phrase, thank you for standing with us, and he indicated that was the phrase that they had used. And their second message was simply this, and, and the ambassador stated it just this simply. He said their message is, please do not forget us. So I am certain that each of us continues to hold a care and concern for our Japanese friends and colleagues in our hearts as they move through their recovery from the, these events, but something else that the ambassador Fujisaka had mentioned, which is that they speak of not just recovery, but renaissance or rebirth, and ultimately a return to prosperity. So I'm certain that we all wish that for them. Now, as the nuclear safety regulator for the United States, uh, I, I had content in here about what the NRC has done after Fukushima. That's been covered very thoroughly this morning. We had a team of senior NRC experts that developed a set of a dozen recommendations. You've heard at some length this morning about the action of the staff. We have had a lot of workshops with stakeholder uh, input, and we are moving forward on a set of actions, and including a set of orders, uh, the content of which is, is very, very familiar uh, to most of you in this audience. But uh, I, I want to emphasize that the NRC did not wait to take ne necessary actions in response to Fukushima. I think something that we didn't go all the way back in the history this morning, so in addition to chartering the task force, Within the first two months after the Fukushima events, um, the NRC took uh, additional measures to ensure that U.S. nuclear power plants were safe. We directed our resident inspectors at every U.S. nuclear power plant to examine several areas, including the plant's mitigative strategies to ensure that plants can effectively cool down reactor cores and spent fuel pools follow following large fires, explosions, and other events. The NRC's resident inspectors also examined the plant's ability to deal with the loss of all alternating current electricity sources, major flooding events and fires and flooding combined with earthquakes. We also issued an information notice, again this was in the early days, to our licensees to make them aware of the effects that the earthquake had on nuclear power plants in Japan with an expectation that they would review the information for applicability to their facilities and consider any actions that might avoid similar problems. And, and also an early action of the NRC, which I don't believe got discussed this morning, was uh, we issued a bulletin to require nuclear power plant licensees to provide information on their plants' approaches to ensure that their mitigative strategies would remain effective over time. And I would note, again, it may sound like I'm talking about a bulletin and an information notice, just as a set of context, bulletins are not common. The bulletin that I just described to you was the first one that we had issued, according to my accounting, in four years. And it was only the 11th bulletin since the year 1997. So uh, overall, I would represent that these activities reinforce the agency's conclusion that our plants are operated in a way that provides for protection of public health and safety. And I think that conclusion remains operative today, and it makes possible a more studied and thoughtful development of lessons learned from Fukushima, uh, for which I'm personally very grateful that, that because of that, uh, what we found to date, we, we will have the opportunity to do a very thoughtful consideration of the lessons learned and the uh, actions that will come in the, in the coming years as we learn more about these events.